On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the July edition of the Fisherman Magazine. We also have the results from last week's South Shore Invitational and all the fishing that happened over the long weekend, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, June 30th, and the July issue of the magazine is out now. As you know, the Fisherman Magazine is committed to studying striped bass. Check out my article on the most recent tagging expedition. Keeping on the subject of science, Chris Paparo has a great read on sharking on the east end of the island and tagging those sharks. And for all you anglers out there looking to fish the blue water, Captain John Raguso has an informative read on how to use deep diving plugs out there. All this and much more in the current issue of the Fisherman Magazine. The rescheduled South Shore Invitational Charity Fishing Tournament was a success last weekend with perfect weather conditions. 31 boats were in the competition. Team Alyssa Lynn won the striped bass category with a total weight of two slot fish hitting the scale at 28.55 pounds. The tuna division went to Team Island Yacht with a 47.3 pounder. The crew aboard 5 for Fighting won the Bluefish title with an 11.55 pound chopper. And the top fluke was caught by aboard the boat Venture. Miller Ales House supplied the food for the hungry anglers. The tournament was a great success and it should be even better next year. In Dreamboat News, the fluke fishing has picked up and so have the entries. This past week, angler John Mack from Fort Lee, New Jersey weighed in the sixth place fluke at True World Tackle. And angler Timothy Burns of Seaford weighed in the seventh place 8.7 pound fluke at South Shore Marine. The leaderboard remains the same. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. This week we only had one fish enter. That was a 25 and a quarter inch weak fish, which is good enough for third place in the category. And that was entered by Eric Lopez. The leaderboard has not changed. Justin Oster is leading with 13 points. Mike Radzizewski is in second place with four points. There are a handful of others with three points. Still a long way to go. Lots of fish to be caught. Let's see what happens next week. All right, now let's go around the map and I'll let you know what I've been hearing. Sea bass season is off to a decent start on the South Shore wrecks and reefs. Some rock piles on the North Shore are also producing too. Montauk is seeing a good bite of sea bass on bait and jigs, but no monsters have been coming out. The South Shore striper bite on Bunker was steady in the beginning of the week from Shinnecock to Fire Island Inlet. Again, with redeployed live bunkers on circle hooks was the best method for catching them. The sound from the west to the east is seeing a good bite of porgies on almost any piece of structure. Most of the fluking in the sound has been taking place in about 20 to 30 feet of water right now also. Look for drop-offs and you'll have a better shot at hooking up. Out east, the plum gut and the race is still holding stripers and bluefish. Three-way rigs and jigging have been doing the trick. On the other fork, Montauk is still holding plenty of stripers in the rips off the point too. The flood tide seems to be doing better than the ebb. And let's not forget about the South Shore Bay fluking. Over the weekend, I had a good session with a friend in Mauritius using spearing on bucktails. We put four keepers in the box by the end of the day. The situation is similar at Jones, Fire Island, and Shinnecock in the bays. This week's winner of the fuel giveaway from Marine Mate and Lynn Nurse was Tom Gruder. He just won $125 worth of fuel from Bergen Bay Docks in West Babylon. For the month of June, for every $100 you spend in Marine Mate, you get entered into the Fuel Drawing. A new winner will be picked every week for the month of June. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. Thanks, Matt. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. We got bottom fishing still going pretty strong. Opening of black sea bass is super exciting. Those tasty sea biscuits we look forward to for all season. We got fluke starting to pick up, and striped bass bite is getting hotter every day, so we're excited, guys. Yeah, and the offshore has been pretty good too. The pressures are strong in the ocean. We also got some good tuna. We got our first blue pin today, so let's keep that. Keep out there, keep those lines tight. We'll catch you next week. Back to you, Matt. Thanks, guys. From Shinnecock, we have Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, well, we got through that win from last week, and the fishing has. Uh, Maybe not exactly left off at where it was, but it definitely is still going on. I do think that some of the bigger bass have moved uh, a bit east. Was in Montauk last night with uh, 
Captain Tom Mikuletsky on Grand Slam Charters and a couple of buddies, and uh, it, it was awesome. Diamond jigging. We caught porgies first. Um, then diamond jigging, got more porgies, got bass, got blues. You got bass on eels. On the porgies we caught, it was just a spectacular night, a couple on top water. So really nice bike going on there for the new moon, which was a lot of fun to get on. Um, closer here in between Shinnecock and Mariches, I am hearing that there's been some bunker pods a little to the east of uh, Shinnecock Inlet and some some nice bass on them so it could be worth taking a you know taking a run out of the inlet looking around for them sea bass going pretty good on the reefs and and wrecks um, you know not not as many knuckleheads but definitely some uh, keepers and uh, you know of course there's only that three bag limit as opposed to a little bit later in the season when it uh, moves up but those are there fluke has definitely improved um, you know, basically all of, of Shinnecock Bay down, you know, from Ponquag Bridge down to Mariches has seen some excellent skinny water fluking on light bucktails. The ocean bite um, has produced some fish, not as much. It does seem like the bay has been a little more productive there. Um, also in the bay um, on Sunday with that really strong uh, wind decided to give the bay a try since the water was really dirty and kind of weeded up off the beach. And I was able to get into a couple of blues, uh, bigger than cocktails, not the full size jumbos that we have, but fun fighting size. A couple of blow ups on top water stuff from smaller um, bass that I didn't connect with. Uh, Ponquag Bridge is probably a good bet with some clam chum and uh, clam bellies and circle hooks at outgoing. And, um, you know, I, hopefully this weekend some people will get out there for some tune. I know a number of guys are going to go out there and try. So, you know, that might be an also another idea for the weekend. So, um, you know, it's great to be in full swing of the season. Hope you're out there catching them. If not, get out there this weekend. Leave a comment below. Uh, reach out to me on social media with reports or any questions you have. All right, back to you, Matt. Talk to you next week. Dylan Jewell from Mauritius has this report for us. Dylan. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Long Island. Hope everyone's had a chance to get out fishing. Uh, around the Central South Shore, the surf fishing, it slowed up quite a bit. Uh, we're approaching the summer doldrums, getting that, you know, much warmer water, but there are still a few decent fish around at nighttime on the open beaches. Uh, plenty of short blue fish around off the surf also. Uh, I know a few guys going out chasing bunker pods, trying to come up with some bass, and from what I've heard, they haven't been able to come up with much of anything. But the boat guys are seeing a decent bite with sea bass, fluke, lots of short fluke, uh, porgies, uh, so the bottom fishing's been pretty good. Offshore guys still doing well with bluefin. A few yellowfin in the mix. Makos, threshers around. Um, this warmer weather that we're having, it's going to bring in that warmer water. It's going to bring in a you know, different push of fish. Um, I know there's been some trigger fish around. Uh, black drum off the beach during the day, throwing clam belly. Um, you're going to have some Spanish mackerel starting to push in maybe you know in a few weeks um but that's what i got for you guys this week hopefully everyone gets out catch them up back to you matt from northport we have mark mcgowan from cow harbor bait and tackle hey folks i'm up here getting all these fresh beautiful skimmer clams ready we sell them in various sizes you know as well as two gallon boxes um sea bass love fresh clams especially when it's got some squid you can tip it with some beautiful spearing and uh you've got a winning combo right there get out there get on those porgy ceviche one of my most favorite dishes it's super healthy low carbs you got your protein in there so if you're into it i would definitely try you know what makes a great ceviche as well sea robin give it a try you'll absolutely love it so much is going on fresh chunks are doing it for the bass um, it's a lot of these fish I've seen them shifting into deeper waters so uh, if you're surf casting it might be dicey for you in the evening might be pretty good because we've got some areas that you know when the back area gets hot sometimes these fish they don't necessarily go off the beach so we're gonna look at cloudy days windy something where the temperature might drop a little bit put some oxygen in the water and you got a winning combination you know fourth of july i absolutely love it i can't wait to have a nice hot dog I'm gonna get some fresh lobsters from my buddy pete and um just celebrate the weekend it's so cool i mean i'm gonna be working too but there's always that time off and when i get it i love spending it with my family and just 
celebrating this Independence Day and our veterans and everything about America. I just love America. You know, I want to see everybody down at the shop. Remember, customer loyalty points, they're like a huge thing. So when you spend your money at Cal Harbor, you always get money back. It's just a great deal. So I hope to see you down. Again, thank you to everyone for so much of the positive feedback. It's so awesome to read and meet people and take pictures and such. It's just fantastic. And you know what? Thank you very much. I hope you have a great 4th of July. And until next report, I bid you all peace, tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Matt. Fire Island report. Uh, things picked up a little bit this week. Fluke fishing got a little bit better inside. Again, more towards the back areas. Uh, inlet not that great. Uh, weak fish really quieted down. Bass is kind of quiet. I did have a keeper fish this week on live bait, but it's not really screaming hot. Uh, sea bass fishing on the, on the reef, both the Hempstead Reef and the Fire Island Reef is good. I had limits two days this week. Nice fish up to 20 inches. And let's see, offshore there's some reports going on. There's some fish south of the Corimbra, like close, three miles south of the Corimbra. I heard a giant was hooked up and some smaller. Generally, we're talking bluefin tuna, so offshore is coming alive as well, and shark fishing is excellent. A lot of threshes around. Uh, even I saw thrushes caught from the beach out of the surf. So looks like it's going to be a great weekend, holiday weekend, July 4th. Weather looks so awesome for that day. A couple of showers, you know, Friday, Saturday, or Saturday into Sunday, but the weather looks decent. So it should be a great weekend around Fire Island. Take care, Matt. Talk to you next week. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, my wife and I, we ran a trip for River Bay Outfitters here up on uh, the Farmington River, and uh, it's just gorgeous. It's been gorgeous weather, cool, it's been very cool. Water's very low, that meant we had to go with long leaders and very small tippets. We're using 7x tippet. The chances of landing, hooking fish are better, landing them or not. As uh, my wife gets that test, how many fish did you hook? A lot. A lot. A lot. I was fortunate over the three days, I was fortunate enough to land five fish. So I was happy over that. But it is it is the Farmington River. Gorgeous. Now, as far as fishing on Long Island goes, I was fortunate enough to take out a good friend of mine, uh, Mark, who uh, he's a customer. He comes in and I guided him on the Connect Quad. Now, he just wanted to sharpen his skills because he was going away. He didn't know how to fly fish, but he had a great day. We caught a lot of fish and a lot of smiles. Uh, as far as the saltwater scene goes, uh, you know, it's surprisingly, at this time of year, it usually gets very hot. The water in the back bays get very hot, and, the, and it becomes a night fishery. But because the water still is fairly cool, uh, people are still going out during dusk and catching stripers. Even in the middle of the day, Kenny went out and he had a nice bluefish on. Uh, so get out there while you can. It's a beautiful summer so far. Tie lines, everybody. Hi. <laughs> From Oceanside, we have Captain Joey Leggio. Hey, Matt, what's going on, brother? All right, so let's do the report for the Debs Linda area, Reynolds Channel area, and all the little canals in between. So we'll start off with the fluke fishing. I had my son out the other day messing around. He was playing with his kayak on the beach while I was anchored up. And I was just casting around some bucktails with some gulp. And uh, the fluke was pretty good. I had like 20 fish, uh, three actually keeper size too, which was pretty cool. Uh, then we started drifting along the channels, along the dock lines. Again, there was plenty of fluke to be caught. Got reports from other guys who were out there fishing, and they're doing very well as well. From the train tracks to the, to the Lindell School, all those canals in between, everybody's doing good. Ducks Point. So there's a nice body of fluke moved in, or the fluke, I should say, are probably moving out to the ocean spots. But uh, fluke fishing has been pretty good. Sea bass fishing, that's been really good. Uh, a lot of big ones to be had. Jimmy and his dad were out, and the guys did very well on the jigs. They had a limited sea bass. Uh, send you a picture of Jackie. She went out east, had a nice real jumbo. Um, I guess they're using bait on her boat that she was on. And what else I got? I had out um, Raph, Lorenzo, and one of his buddies. We, had, we went out Saturday, and the guys who wanted to catch sea bass, we had out limited sea bass to about four pounds. Uh, they were caught on clams. We also had ling in the mix. We had codfish. Uh, what else do we have? Some bluefish. And then the following day, I had out Brian and his family. They wanted to do the exact same thing. Shout out to the reefs again. 
and the guy scored well. Not as many keepers this time. I believe they only had four keepers, Seabass, but probably 100, but only four were keeper size. And the guys also had, again, Ling and all other species, triggerfish, dogfish, whatever. Uh, lots and lots of porgies, plenty of porgies we had. And the guys also had the first triggerfish of the season, which was pretty nice, a nice jumbo-sized triggerfish. Um, sorry, I'm going through my notes again. On the offshore scene, the shark fishing. I'd like to congratulate Kenny Owens. The guys won the Hooks for Heroes Shark Tournament, and also my good friend Nikki on the Noah Time. They took third with uh, Nick's fish being 311, and uh, Kenny's fish was, I believe it was 418, 420, something in that area. He had a nice big thresher and took first place. So congratulations, Kenny. You guys always do it. And uh, that was that. On the tuna fishing, um, I spoke to Steve. He took out <clears throat> Jack and Noah, and the guys, the kids actually connected with a nice, uh, beautiful bluefin tuna. So these kids are really learning the ropes very well, and Steve's out with them all the time. So it's really great to see these kids out there doing it, especially catching such awesome fish like that. And also the bass, so I didn't touch on that. The bass is still in the bays too. It definitely has dwindled down just a little bit. It's not like it was, but the bass is still in the channels. They're also very good under the lights. If you're fishing at nighttime, look for those green dock lights along any of the docks around Reynolds Channel, and you'll find those bass there too, which is a lot of fun. Real light spin gear, small little bucktail, small little swim shads, bass assassins, anything like that. Uh, works great. Also, a little swimming Yozori plugs work as well, too. But that's my report, guys. I'll talk to you all next week. Matt, back to you, brother. Chris Landry has the Jamaica Bay report. Thanks, Matt. Inside Jamaica Bay, it's very similar to last week. There are blue fish blitzing all over the place on Peanut Bunker. Find the birds and you'll find the blues with occasional schoolie sized stripers mixed in. There's also fluke to be had with occasional keepers. Sea bass season has started, but I haven't heard of a single sea bass being caught within Jamaica Bay. I haven't caught one. My friends haven't caught one, haven't seen one. If you have caught one, please comment below. Other than that, Shark Week again. Captain Ron Connolly and his crew caught this 584 pound thresher shark, which is close to the New York state record of 614 pounds. It was weighed in at Stella Marie's. This shark was caught 10 miles south of the Rockaway jetty in a 46 foot Viking. So shout out to his crew, Ryan and Brendan, his sons, along with Tom and Rob Label, Ed Lynch and Doc Pinsky. Congratulations on this catch. Okay, it's almost 4th of July weekend. Be safe out there, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Lastly, we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey guys, checking in from the Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. This week's fishing report sees rooster fish here along the beaches, rocks, and islands close to Capos. We've had some beautiful rooster fish in the last week, up to 40 pounds. Further offshore, we've had some really good wahoo fishing. We've released wahoo in the last week, up to 60 pounds. Some really stunning wahoo, 40, 50, 60 pounders. Really nice fishing. We've had yellowfin tuna in the 30 to 50 pound category, and the sailfish bite has been pretty good as well. Just yesterday, my buddy released eight sailfish. Hope to see you here soon, guys. Back to you. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.